Hi friends, thanks once again for joining with us here at Trinity United Church in Prince George, British Columbia for evening prayer. We're really glad that you're able to join with us this evening. Spend some time in contemplation, reflection, and prayer with one another. It's been another one of those weekends, things up and down and twist and turn. On Friday, the CDC released information and then today said, oops, we made a mistake. We didn't mean to say that. What do you do in a world where even the experts seem uncertain as to what to do next? Where the very people we trust to get it right the first time are admitting that this is a bit of an experiment and some trial and error and some of will get right and some of it will going to get wrong. Much the same way as all of us. I think that's one of the pieces for me in this whole pandemic experience is the realization that we're all human beings. Complete with all of our flaws and all of our successes and everything in between. No one of us is any more human than anybody else. And we all make mistakes. We all get it wrong. We, we think we know the answer. We think we understand what's happening. We, we know for sure that that is true and real, only to discover that we might have gotten it wrong. In the midst of all of that, I came across a piece from uh, Donna Sinclair from the uh, activist alphabet. It picks up a theme I did a little while ago about prayer as an act of resistance. In the midst of competing ideologies and philosophies, competing theories about where the COVID-19 virus came from or didn't come from, was 5G the cause or not? Should we even use cell phones at all? In a competing peace around who's actually driving all of this and and should I run out and buy an air purifier or or would it be safer just to buy more stocks in the companies that make air purifiers seeing as now folks seem to be recommended to go get one it's a confusing world and in to the midst of all that we gather together for prayer Donna Sinclair writes I am clear about one thing as I pray, the light within which I move and breathe, the divinity in which I am immersed for my whole life, whether I choose it or not, the love in which I swim, all of which I name God, does not need my prayers. This God is made of love, which will pour out on me and through me, no matter what I say. I am clear that this love is poured out as willingly upon a pipeline promoting CEO or an industry captured panel of regulators as it is upon me. But when I pray, I remember who I am. The act of articulating my gratitude and fear of finding words for my hopes and petitions forces me to recall that I am a creature of this lovely planet. It helps me imagine what must be done to bring it back to health. The act of praying strengthens my backbone so that I will not bow to those who insist that we must wreck this one river with cyanide for the sake of bars of gold or foul this other river with the byproducts of fossil fuel extraction. I will not forget that I am connected to those rivers in every cell of my body. That is why people of faith link protest and prayer together. We resist damage to the beauty of creation, and we pray for the strength and courage to carry on. Those two pieces, for me at least, are interconnected. This seeming whirlwind of information, the announcements of elections, the loom of potentially another one, others in other countries already scheduled, already happening, in the midst of it all, of schools reopening and some being shut down and communities reopening and some being shut down, it's tempting to lose ourselves, 
to lose our sense of identity, of, of centeredness, of groundedness, of rootedness, in a love that is far bigger and grander than anything we can even put into words. And so prayer is, is an act of resistance. It's a resistance against that temptation of being sucked into that black hole where we just lose who we are. It's an act of resistance that says, no, that's all great and good. I'm going to stand here. It's an act of resistance that grounds ourselves in a deeper knowledge and a deeper wisdom. One that transcends time and space. One that bridges the gap across artificial distinctions like color, race, language. It's one that unites us in our diversity. As people created by that love that Sinclair was talking about. And so this evening, I invite you to think about all of the information that you once believed to be absolutely, utterly true, and now, at some different stage in life, even if that's 60 seconds later, realize that maybe that wasn't as true as you first thought it was. Think about what you have learned over the course of your lifetime, those handful of teachings that that have always felt true and resonated deep within your heart and mind as true. The touchstone pieces that you go back to again and again and again, no matter what life throws at you, those teachings, those understandings that help make everything okay. That's where we want to go this evening in prayer, to the things that root us, that ground us, that uplift us, that welcome us, that name us as wanted and included and affirmed in the presence of the divine. And so, let us gather together for prayer. Creator, once again, we find ourselves standing at a confluence of information. Other smaller streams are coming together, rushing towards us, forming a, a mighty river, and the temptation is to simply be swept away by it. Help us to ground ourselves in you, so that as the trials of life pass, by on either side of us, we might know that we stand upon a firm foundation. Help us to distinguish between that which is passing and liminal and that which is truth and everlasting. Help us to see the way you see. Help us to love the way that that you love. Help us to recognize our own shortcomings as well as those around us, not to lord it over them, but as an acknowledgement of our humanness. Those aspects that we hold in common with one another. Strengthen our backbones so that we can resist the pushes and pulls of everyday life. Strengthen our backbones so we can see clearly the choices and the implications we make when we go to the grocery store or when we go clothing shopping or the type of vehicle we buy. Strengthen our backbone. 
when we're tempted to walk on the other side of the street or ignore suffering or delude ourselves into believing that racism isn't really that big a deal or that people aren't still homophobic or transphobic or genderphobic. Strengthen our backbone. When we're tempted to buy into the rhetoric that pushes someone's rights are more important than someone else's and the only way we can all have enough is to take it from one another. Strengthen our backbone so that we might truly understand that in your creation there is enough for all. There just isn't enough for the greed of a few. And together, grounded in you, may we find ways of building community, of noticing when our neighbors need a hand, of reaching out to those who just need someone to listen, someone to see them, someone to value them, someone to include them. And in so doing, always help us to be on the lookout for those small gospel actions that make a huge difference in our lives and in the lives of others. And so this evening, as we join together in prayer, we name people because all your people are important. We name events because what happens around us is important. We name places because we are rooted people. And so we pray for Jim and Sylvia, Laura B, J H, Colette, Bevan, Aaron, Donna, Jerry M, Ernie H, Joanne, Kyle, Tyrell, Joe M, Beverly M, R P, Gordon S, Kirsten, Nathan and Anna, Karen K, Sig V. We pray for those on all sides of the indigenous fisheries issues on the East Coast. We pray for communities and people challenged by the realities of forest fires raging out of control up and down the western coast of the United States of America. We pray for those trying to add to their families and those wrestling with the implications of their family getting smaller. Be near us all, O oh God, for we seek to be your people in this time and place to the best of our ability. As we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Friends, thanks again for joining with us here at Trinity United Church in Prince George, British Columbia. Every evening at about 8 p.m. Pacific, we gather together for evening prayer. It's our hope that wherever you find yourself this evening or this morning, it's a place where you can be safe, be calm, and be community. Together, let's both be and receive the Christ to and from one another. And let's join together again tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. Pacific for evening prayer.